Welcome to Context TV. 40 years ago, the Club of Rome presented the study The Limits to Growth, Creating Worldwide Attention. Some days ago, the Club of Rome presented a new study, Plundering the Planet. We talked to the author of the study, Ugo Bardi. Bardi is professor for physical chemistry at the University of Florence and author of numerous books, including The Limits to Growth Revisited. Welcome to Context TV, Ugo Bardi. Mr. Bardi, what are the main findings of your report? The book has an essential line that uh, by mining over the past few hundred years, mostly, but an activity that has been, that has been going on for centuries, millennia, even billions of years by human beings, and now we have reached some sort of limit. We have been transforming the planet into something totally different. The planet as it is today is not anymore what it used to be 50 years ago, 100 years ago. It is a planet where the basic resources, the mineral deposits and ores that we have been exploiting for building our civilization, our world as we know it, have been consumed and dispersed all over the ecosystem. This is creating two problems or phenomena, if you like. One is depletion, in the sense that mining is becoming more and more expensive. That is, we are not running out of anything, really, but what we're doing is costing us more in terms of energy. And since our energy comes mainly, mainly from mineral resources, then, then it is a problem. And the second problem, correlated, the other, f the other side, is pollution. Pollution is probably an even worse problem because all this great mass of material, and we're talking about trillions of tons of materials extracted and processed, has to go someplace. And mostly it ends up dispersed in forms which are completely impossible to recover and reinsert in the industrial cycle. We have uh, heavy metals, radioactive materials, simply rubble, and uh, carbon dioxide, which is probably right now the major problem we face because it is creating this small problem, which is called global warming or climate change, which we should probably call catastrophic climate change because this is what we risk if we continue in this way. Well, which important minerals will become scarce first? We have some critical resources, for instance, uranium. That's an interesting point. Uranium is in short supply. Mineral production is not sufficient to fuel the existing um, nuclear plants. So how, how are they operate? They operate with uranium um, obtained from old atomic warheads which is not so bad as an idea, as you can think, but that's a very limited uh, resource, and which is, of course, a very politically managed. Now, the treaties which make it possible to dismantle these warheads and, tra and transform them into, into fuel for nuclear plants are very delicate. And, uh, and uh, you know, with this shortage, I would not be surprised if uranium were to be the first resource that show critical availability problems. You already talked about the energy dilemma. Many people think that we will run out of some resources and they will be finished, but you argue that even before the resources are exhausted, uh, we, will not, uh, we will run short of them because we lack the energy to extract them from ever less concentrated resources. But explain the energy dilemma. This is simple, simple physics. In a long time ago, people would extract core using a pick. It was easy. Well, you, need, you needed some energy because you need to have muscles and, uh, and be robust. Uh, but now, to extract core, we use giant machines. To make one of the machines we use today, it's a huge, the largest land-based ma machines ever built. 
and you need steel. For instance, if you need steel, you need iron. If you need iron, you need uh, iron ore. So the whole story to make an, um, um, a machine which extracts coal, you need to have the energy necessary to make this machine, and that's expensive. It takes energy, and that's, uh, that's a concept of energy yield or energy return on investment, which uh, is subjected to a slightly nasty idea, which is common in economics, but it's true. It's a diminishing returns on investments, which is very common. And uh, the problem is that you, you invest first in the most profitable investments, then when you, then you have to make more investments, then you invest in less profitable. And, and so you have this problem of diminishing returns which is very common. It happens with minerals. So at present, we, we are not running out of the resource. We are not even running out of energy. But we are gradually going through a road which is like, like, like you know, walking on a path which goes up. First, you don't realize that you're that you're climbing because it's just a gentle slope. Then, as you as you go, you discover it. You're becoming maybe more steep, and then you start to be tired a little bit, but you can still keep going. And then you discover the path goes up like this, like, and then you will have to climb, holding with your hands. At some point, you say, "I cannot climb anymore." Well, not yet to that point, but we have to start thinking that at some point the slope will be so steep that we will not be able to climb it anymore. We will have to slow down and go down. In your book you brought an example, uh, copper. When copper uh, extraction started it was like 15% or, or and now it is 0.3% or something. Yeah, we are extracting 0.5% or as long as we have energy, we can keep doing it for maybe 10, 20 years. Then, then it will be a problem anyway. The problem is that we may have a, a um, reduction of the supply of energy. And in this case, it will be very difficult to maintain copper production. And that could happen in a few years.